What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day and today I'm here to talk to you not about heaven, not about this heavenly buck skin, Buckulees that just launched in 1.7, but to talk to you about my hell, or my elo hell, so to speak. It's not a rant. It's a it's a it's a gameplay rant because I want to show off the skin. It's a great game against Bitey and Dethroner uh, on SK. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Miss Heal, I've been playing with uh, him or her, whoever it is, all morning as well. A good player, and so there should be some some good competition here. So I'm excited to show you guys this off and commentate this one. But the biggest conversation piece is this. I want to talk about why I'm in Elo Hell. Why we need to change the defin definition of Elo Hell. Why everyone in Paladins needs to feel sorry for me, okay? No, I'm kidding. Not about that, but truly uh, why we need to redefine Elo Hell. And I am, I am myself single-handedly helping to do that. Also talking a little bit about the burst meta and how it actually is is kind of pissing me off a little bit i don't know I, I love the play but in terms of my casual play it's kind of pissing me off and then also sometimes why i'm getting super frustrated uh in my casual play as well just want to give you all those topics to set it up we get a nice kill under the dredge there turn it around and 27 percent counting on our objective thus far Breaking into the first thing, of course, with the Elo Hell, as you guys will see, uh, it's just, it's obviously looking at the fact that I am, myself, playing against two professional players who get salaries to play Paladins for one of the more prestigious organizations in the world, SK Gaming. I am playing against them in a casual game while I'm trying to show off my new skin. Now, you may ask, Rande, how have you gotten here? What has gone wrong in your life to allow this to take place? As we're 93%, we kind of just get wiped there by some good pressure from the two to throw her and Bitey right on the side. But the key is, I don't know. I've just existed as an account for so long that I think my level has truly meant that... It, like, I'm 1% in, like, kills, like, 0 .001, and it's, like, just because I've played the longest. Not because I've just, I kill everyone, you know, I'm not 50-0 and 0 every game. It's just because I'm the longest. So, we talk about this, like, gold and this, like, silver or sometimes bronze elo hell where you're, you're better than players, but the players you're with aren't that good. So, you can never accurately play well enough in a five-person game to carry a group of four players who aren't that good to reasonably just consistently grind all the way up to diamond, right? That's the whole point of Elo Hell. But this version of Elo Hell that I'm in is very specific because it just puts me against these great players all the time. And I'm not a great player. I'm a, I'm a good player. Don't get me wrong. I'm a good player. I know how to play Paladin. I know things to do. But my execution is going to be sloppy day to day. I'm not running on 144 hertz anymore. I dropped down to a 60 hertz because of a stupid decision. So my peripherals aren't amazing. My time is very limited to play. And I'm playing primarily to show content and do great things for you guys. And my point is why I got to get hit up with the pros. It's actually been a very frustrating experience for me. I'm, I'm just being truly honest because I love sharing what I'm going through. But, uh, and hopefully you guys are, are enjoying the skin because it is pretty sick as well as this mouth as well. Remember, uh, if you're following me on Twitter, you're going to have a chance to win one of these bad boys in the HRX Digital Loot Pack as well. Bye, he looks like he's dead to rights. <laughs> he's going to take him down there as the Thurner starts to start something. And I'm just going to say, no, I'm not about it, son. I'm going to back off a little bit. Don't want anything to do uh, with that Fernando in that position as I just try to hold this left side now, get the bulk up recovery, and just try to back off with a little bit of health, 420 to my name. Hey, hey. Uh, I don't, I don't smoke or anything like that. Just saying. A lot of people say, hey, hey. So I decided I'd do it. Okay, I'm a conformist, damn it. Anyways, going back to it, it's just I felt that I've been in this really interesting quandary of I'm getting great players in my games, which means it's great competition potentially. But I don't always play at a level where it makes sense for me to be in that game. I, sometimes I come home from work, I've casted for eight hours in the, in the pro league or something of that nature, and I come back and I just want to like play. And I'm playing against these guys who are just they're play, they're about to win a world championship. They, they you know they could be taking home a hundred thousand dollars in a month. Like I. I'm not at that level of trying to compete against people who are competing like that and duo queuing yet. I get thrown in into these matches. And here's my biggest problem. The Throner, let me fight Bitey, please. I'm trying to hit Bitey up and just say, Bitey, you know what? Listen, stop letting the Throner save your butt. All right, take the 1v1. Take it, dog. Because actually, no, Buck does decently well against that 1v1 with uh, <laughs> Eevee. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, this is a good matchup for me. Let's just keep it going. But he is getting the help, playing a good tank. I noticed that Masiel hasn't slithered yet, so this is the time to move. Hasn't slithered, hit the big turnaround shot as well. And there's Fluffy Rupp, beautiful Dread Serpent to distract the front lines. The Throner throws the shield up, and so does Barrack, but the barricade will not last long enough. Overtime taken away, and they are still there contesting, but the bulk up means me and the rest of my squad feel confident to defend. And that will do it for round one. And the crux of point one is that 
I am just good enough to be in these games and not good enough to carry any of them. So it creates some frustrating moments. Please, if you guys see me in there, you know, you know, the I played against a vocal like three times today. It's just like, my goodness gracious. Just it was four hours. It was like we couldn't do anything. I'm like, man, this is two and a half, this is two hours I've spent trying to get this video, and this dude's just beating me. Anyways, that's the one big thing that I had as an issue. The second topic that I wanted to talk about was the burst meta and why it's pissing me off. You know, I tried to play a lot of champions. You know, I wanted to play Koga, right? But Koga's been off meta slightly in higher level games. Maybe not in casual games where Master of Arms still just rolls. But in higher level games, he's so skinny. He's not able to survive this damage. You saw my Willow gameplay I put out. Koga's can't even play. So when a new Koga skin comes out and I'm trying to play Koga, I'm having a hard time getting footage for the skin as we dive into the back line here and find a nice kill on Auburn. This this dredge going down early has been a big key to our success. We see the shield. Actually, no, that was the Immortal. And then the shield comes up. And there's Miss Hill just healing him up as well. But we rotate on to Bidey. So hopefully Bidey's in trouble now. We know he's isolated. But there's the dome shield. And that is not what I wanted to see. Bidey waiting for him. But I missed the shot. Okay, nice play, buddy. Nice play. All right, Bidey. Bidey's Bidey for a reason. So good stuff for him, man. He's the coach. I'm going to have to teach... Have him teach me that one. Um, but I, but I, but you guys see the problem that I'm saying? You know, I love that we've seen a different change in meta. It's actually so fun to watch in a pro league. And so I'm not hating on it because different metas arise. And that's the thing. I was, I was kind of um, educating somebody who had said, you can't refer to everything as a new meta, Rain Day. It's been here for a while. Well, meta means that it's come into the consciousness of players and is now something that you're seeing in every game or maybe something that you're seeing dominate ranked picks or, or priorities right that's in the meta consciousness of people it's not that this build has existed only for a day and thus now it can be a new thing it's this build could have existed forever but because maybe burst is viable now whereas um in the future maybe maybe longer sustained fights are more viable and you can pick some of these lower health champions because they can stay alive before getting bursted down then maybe a build that koga has been having for this entire time starts to become valuable the problem is right now it's not and it limits a lot of players and champions that i can cover and i feel very very forced like this today to play like a bulk up buck i want to play buck another way i wanted to try and snare buck but you see the damage that i get i mean i'm i'm getting 30 percent damage reduction I'm healing for an extra 600. I'm getting 300 health on top of that added for another four or five seconds onto my health pool. And I'm still dying super quickly in this game. Imagine if I just ran in snare. I mean, my bulk up would do nothing, right? I mean, that's the problem. I want to be able to run these things and show them off to you guys, but it takes so much time and compounds with problem number one, which is me having to play against Bidey in the Throne every game. Like, if I was playing against no nobody, you know, scrub gym and, uh, you know, just went to the gym and relax and pax todd i don't know i just try to rhyme anyways what i'm saying is some dudes who don't really care and they're just playing paladins to chill it might be a different story i could flex a little bit but it's super hard to flex against players who every single time i buck wild have a perfect immortal every time i try to break down the shields after that they you know break down the defenses after that have a shield ready for it we finally find Missel, but auburn and Missel are the only players i'm having decent opportunities to kill because they're the only ones who are exposing themselves everyone else on the side of body to throw them are playing perfectly they're managing their cooldowns there's no way i can kill them especially if they're paying attention to allow me not to kill them and that's something that Body hates. He doesn't like when I do videos on him because he, he's like, you know, you only show the videos that you win, Rain Day. You know, why I don't be using the coach for, uh, for, for uh, you know, the publicity, right? Just I beat the coach, SK Gaming, I beat two pros. I'm try not trying to make it about this, but it's, it's a bigger conversation for me. So um, what do you guys feel about it so far? What do you think about the burst meta problems that I'm talking about? The lack of variety that, you know, content creators can maybe show or that I, I feel comfortable showing at these high level games. And also just the fact that the new definition of ELO hell I'm trying to present because honestly, this is, I'd rather, I'd rather honestly be the best player in the lobby and try to carry my squad versus being always just like, uh, I don't know, under the gun, man. I don't know. It makes me a better player though. I will say that it does make me a better player. And um, I think that unfortunately, although it is limiting diversity in the talents, I think it is also adding a very interesting, um, uh, dynamic where certain things are just very very strong and you have to play the meta I was playing today early I was trying to actually play some Koga trying to play some buck and then someone would pick a sky then someone would pick uh, Leon and we just wouldn't have any blast damage and, and you just can't do that the other team is going to inevitably pick 
a dredge. They're going to inevitably, inevitably pick a bomb king, a willow. You're going to be fighting into something that will win if you don't have a response or at least a relative uh, measure, countermeasure against it. And, and, and you have to be able to have these kind of lineups where you just pick good things. I mean, it's just too dangerous if you don't. And so that's... Uh, that's what we're dealing with here. So far, first two rounds have gone decently well, but oh man, I tried to get the dismount. It did not work out for me at all. Nice bulk up recovery. Got the 2600 health, trying to heal back up to it. And we will not. 2300 back to my name. Ice Storm in the back line as well. And there's the shield. Perfectly timed. I have 66%, but there's an immortal right when the King Bomb pops off to make sure that he stays immune and can stay conscious. He goes around, gets into the gourd. I try to fight there, but there is a problem because I fought into health. I had a couple of headshots. Mmm, the spray. All right, D. All right. The spray coming back is a little premature, man. A little premature. But I uh, I respect it. I respect it. You know, it's one thing. to duo. But you going to hit me with a spray? Oh, I see how it is. Man. I see how it is. Okay. Okay. 72% here on their objective. I don't know if we're going to get back out of me. Bidey's done such a good job of zoning us. This is Frog Island in a nutshell. I missed that shot, too. And <clears throat> the other thing that is really important about this is that Maybe at a high level, I'm very flattered to be in these games. At a high level, I think I would be able to, if I get my peripherals right, if I have the time to put into this game, if I focus on a certain class or a certain few champions to really start to understand and play meta champions, um, I think I could really have fun in these games quite more often than I've been doing. So one of my strategies um, is potentially to do some games like this where I have a little bit more focus while I'm playing and then a little bit more focus while I'm commentating and not trying to do both simultaneously while being on camera at the same time. I feel like that might actually help me to give you some better gameplay um, and reduce some of the frustration in my life because what one and two are resulting in is a little bit more frustration than I'd like in my life in playing a game that I love so much like Paladins um, because limited time uh, and I have goals. You know, I want to get daily uploads for the rainstorm. I want to make sure that you guys are getting your content and then I'm feeling good about the content I'm putting out. And if that's not happening, as I can get some beautiful heals and some beautiful support here from my teammates, although it does take down uh, Cyclone, uh, Silosin, it seems like uh, I have been able to at least hold the left side for a little bit. It's getting rough though. A minute and 29. They could push this in. 30 health to my name. And the damage over time from Fernandez Flame Lance takes me out. A good hook. And there's the Immortal. That is a relatively late Immortal because it seemed like he was very, very low, but he's going to be able to make it out again. 13 streak for Dethroner. Good plays all around. Min maxing it to the T. Fluffy Ruff goes down. Tajin, he has not died very much in this game at all. Mako has been phenomenal. Silos, and he dies again, so we don't have a healer. I go into the Buck Wild to force him away, and I'm just going to use my recovery to make sure I get a little healthier. I felt like uh, the lack of health I had was just a little too scary. Kuaku finally finds a kill on the Bidey, and so that will shut down a lot of their aggression, and that will give Kinesa a little bit of time to just set up and find some big shots. So that will either force the shield, or that will force a lot of damage uh, onto one of the front lines. So that is a good idea if we can help her to get successful. Just grabbing the Rejuvenate as well, and a morale boost, because I do want to see if I can get that Buck Wild off every single time there's been a counter for it, and I know that this healer was one hit. He used the Slither. I find the shot. That's all I came for. If I can get anything else, I'm happy, and there it is. We do find the healer, but as I'm talking, Nutrition Facts finds Bitey as well. That's two down, and I don't think they'll be able to have the healer here to push. 20 seconds now. Nutrition Fact can move in the other line of sight, which is big for the Sniper. We've grabbed this area. Tajin finds Auburn in the process, and and grabbing that healer really forced the rest of the team to fall back. So you can see these higher level decisions, these, these min-max things are really the difference between having success in one of these games or not. Getting the bulk up, getting the recovery there, forcing the Barrack into a bowling ball uh, kind of dash before he's able to get to the point away towards his teammate, away from our objective. That's what we've been looking for and we've been able to find it and we find the Rejuvenate too as well because I am getting some good healing. Shout out to the boy. Silasin and uh, Tajin, the rest of the squad, Nutrition Facts, I forget the name of my homie, Kuhaku, uh, on the Bomb King, doing really, really well. So, shout outs, it's 3 3, and it's a good game. So, hopefully, you've been enjoying this, but I, I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and maybe uh, thoughts about stuff that you'd like to see in the future. You know, I've been in a very rant mode, and I think this wasn't a rant, but I could definitely put together some funny things, maybe make a fail compilation, because that seems to be the most amount of stuff that I've got footage wise, just fails. Um, 
but I could also just, you know, give you a little bit more of this where it's some more dedicated commentary and I feel like there is some value into this as well. Buck going in on the left side. I'm trying to control this because this is a really uh, great thing for Buck to be able to do. He's one of the tankiest flanks, especially with bulk up, so he can kind of stall out the left side. As they all approach, we know there's three. That means two are in the back line. It's the healer and this dredge. Last round, we didn't kill the dredge, and now Tajan with a beautiful hook reads uh, the teleport, and that means that Fluffy Ruff is now in trouble because he's by himself. A little bit of a knock up there, although no damage, and now Fluffy Ruff could go down. Dread Serpent and the Dome Shield. I don't die, though, and I've just bulked up at the perfect time. Michelle out of the do uh, Dome Shield means that Fluffy Ruff is down. This stun could be huge. But the Ancient Rage stops it all. CC and Unity, 3-3. Three to three. Now Dethroner gets the headshot for 900. 1100 now, adding the 200 right back to back. Tajan is in trouble, but Dethroner's in even more trouble as well, forcing the Immortal. Fluffy Ruff goes to the left side, trying to find the headshot. Can't quite get it. Double shot for the Bitey, though. The shotgun doing the work, 99%. And that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. The Makoa Buck flank holding down the left side. Quick switch to the right. It was the audible. It was the... Uh, what is it called? It's the it's the it's the rotation where you run in the football where the, the, the quarterback takes the ball and then he tosses it. The run option. It was the play option, right? The pass option. I don't know what it's called. I used to play running back, but it's a long time ago, guys. Tajan, shout out to him. He played really, really well. And the cool thing is you do get to see a lot of good players as well because when you get Bidey and Throner, you know there's some other good players on your team um, because I'm a very middle of the pack as far as the ELO. I'm not going to be leading the ELO. And so I feel like it's a, it's a great opportunity to learn a lot about these good players. It's scouting in general. You know, decent, decent game. I rarely go positive in these types of games. The Knesset, 11-3, pretty impressed with that. Uh, but 9-13, and 13, I got a lot of kills. I got a lot of clutch kills. The 11 assists means, you know, um, I've contributed to 20 of the, uh, of the kills and the eliminations. You know, dying 13 times. Kind of a net positive. Didn't get the killing blows, but, I mean, Tajan did a fantastic job of securing those for his highest killing blows in all the game and uh, nearly takes top damage on our team aside from Nutrition Facts of Kinesa. So a really good job from everyone around, and hopefully you guys appreciate it. If you did enjoy it and you had some comments, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I appreciate you guys supporting me on this journey of trying to get these daily uploads going, and I'm going to do my best to get them to you no matter what. Remember to never give up, never stop gaming, everybody, and as always, I'll see you next time.